Why is it so difficult to get to Mars? In addition to Earth, Mars is the planet with the best conditions to host humans. Space agencies such as SpaceX or NASA are planning to take the next generation of astronauts to the Red Planet, but it has not yet been achieved. Why is it so difficult to get to Mars? Let's start. During the space race in the 60s, NASA successfully took six missions to the moon that placed 12 astronauts on the surface of our natural satellite. Having gone to the moon several times nearly five decades ago and is used to seeing astronauts travel to space almost routinely, having extended stays on the International Space Station, it's tempting to think that sending humans to Mars could be perfectly plausible today. However, to the current date in 2022, seeing the first humans on the red planet still seems to be distant. Science and technology tell us that sending human beings to Mars constitutes a challenge of enormous difficulty and complexity that is far from everything that has been done so far in the history of human exploration of space. But the reason almost all others are derived from is one, distance. Mars is far away. We see astronauts frequently travel to space, to the International Space Station, the ISS. Before that, for years, cosmonauts traveled to the Mir station aboard Soyuz ships, and currently Taikonauts travel frequently to the Tiangong Space Station in China. Popularly, one has the impression that the place to which one travels in these missions is very distant. However, the typical altitudes at which these stations and spacecraft orbit Earth are a few hundred kilometers. The ISS, for example, orbits the Earth at an altitude that is equivalent to the distance in a straight line between Madrid and Almeria, about 400 kilometers. This space region to which humans routinely travel is within the so-called region of low Earth orbits, and technically we call it LEO, low Earth orbit. Lunar man travel involves traveling beyond LEO orbit, since the Moon orbits our planet at an average distance of about 380,000 kilometers, which is about 1,000 times farther than the altitudes of these low orbits. A crew and their spacecraft are put into orbit around the Earth shortly after launch, while the distance to the Moon was covered on the Apollo missions in about three days. In the case of Mars, the situation is very different. Going to Mars involves moving from a geocentric mission to a sun-centered orbit, or heliocentric, which is a massive leap in the distances involved. Although the maximum and minimum distances between Earth and Mars vary within a specific range, the minimum possible distance is about 55 million kilometers. This distance is achieved every 26 months when Mars and Earth have an approach gap that lasts a few weeks. These are huge distances compared to all manned missions to space so far. The maximum distance to Mars is 1,000 times greater than that between the Earth and the Moon, and approximately 1 million times greater than the distance separating the Earth's surface from the LEO orbits to which one travels typically. In other words, a single trip to Mars is equivalent to 1 million trips to the ISS space station. Without needing to know anything else, the data about the distance to Mars already constitute an excellent clue to glimpse the magnitude of the problem. To appreciate it better and without going into details related to propulsion methods or orbital dynamics, we will compare two human crewed missions in round numbers. An orbital mission around the Earth for a single crew member and a lunar mission for three crew members. We start with the first orbital mission of the Mercury program of the early 60s, John Glenn's Mercury 6. In this mission, a 120-ton Atlas rocket was used with a height of 29 meters. It managed to put a useful mass of 1.2 tons into orbit at an average altitude of 200 kilometers around the Earth. The cargo was a Mercury capsule with its only crew member, who remained in space for five hours. Let's see what changes the situation by having the Moon as a destination about 1,000 times farther away. In the case of Apollo 17, the last lunar exploration mission, its command and service module plus its lunar module, adding everything, are about 50 tons, were launched to the Moon by the mighty Saturn V rocket of about 3,000 tons and 110 meters high for a mission of a total duration of about 12 and a half days, in which two of its crew remained on the lunar surface just over three days. In contrast, the third remained inside the ship throughout the mission. 
We see that the quantitative leap needed when we want to go to another world, that is 1,000 times beyond the low orbits of Earth, is enormous. On the one hand, the useful load to be launched happens to be 1.2 to 50 tons, while the size of the launch rocket happens to be 120 to 3,000 tons. Compare all this to a mission to Mars. For a mission to Mars, the crew will consist of six astronauts, and its duration taking as an example the approaching gap in 2037 would be 174 days for the outbound and 201 days for the return, with a stay of 539 days on Mars. Such an extended stay on Mars would be necessary for the hope that the relative position between this planet and Earth would be optimal for the return with minimal fuel expenditure which saves the shipment of hundreds of tons of fuel. This represents 914 days of stay on the Red Planet, or approximately two and a half years. As we can see, the jump between the Moon and Mars is enormous, since doubling the crew and extending the duration to about 73 times that of the longest lunar mission means the need to provide and transport about 150 times more supplies. On the other hand, a longer duration of interplanetary travel means the need to provide the crew with more excellent protection against radiation, which is achieved in part by adding even more mass to the ships. Currently, this problem is not entirely solved. Another problem with a long-lasting trip is that things break down. Either the durability of the equipment will have to be substantially improved, or they will have to be able to be replaced by spare parts that will also have to be transported, which implies a greater mass. Cargo spacecraft visiting the ISS can stock up on spare parts when something goes wrong on board, but this option will not be possible on a mission to Mars. Anything that can break will have to be repaired or exchanged for the same parts on board. Tons of fuel for a single trip Experience tells us that breaking a train is much more complex than breaking a truck, because the former has more mass and therefore needs more time to break. Sending more mass to Mars also means transporting more fuel to accelerate all that cargo to Mars, but it also means carrying more fuel to stop when the ship reaches the planet. In addition to all the fuel necessary to return to Earth, we are talking about hundreds of tons of fuel that we will have to carry to Mars in some form. One option that some scientists propose is to use the minerals and gases trapped in the subsoil of Mars to produce fuel. But so far, no system has been tested that can do this. So until we prove that something like this is possible, the only option will remain to use our fuel. And for the distances we've talked about, as well as for the round trip, in total, the Mars mission will require carrying between 850 and 1,250 tons of fuel. This is a massive amount if we consider that the ISS has a mass of about 420 tons, and that a ship with which we are familiar, the Space Shuttle, can only send into space between 15 and 25 tons approximately, depending on the altitude of the final orbit. The Ariane 5 can put about 20 tons in low orbit around the Earth, like the Russian Proton rocket, with the most powerful ships of the time, taking all that fuel into space would take us about 10 trips at least. Thus, we can already intuitively anticipate that a single rocket will not be able to be used to go to Mars, but that several rocket launches will be required as powerful or more powerful than the Saturn V of the 60s, to assemble in space different propulsion elements, fuel modules, habitats, and ships, which will have to be sent to Mars separately and in advance, in addition to the spacecraft with the crew, which would be sent last. Although it depends on various factors, they will require, in fact, 10 rocket launches with the capacity of the Saturn V or similar. But remember, the total number of Saturn V rockets sent to the Moon in the entire Apollo program was nine. The Saturn V was retired from service after the Apollo program, but holds the record even today as the most powerful operational rocket ever, capable of putting just over 120 tons into low orbit around the Earth and sending 50 tons to the Moon. It had to be specifically designed and built in its day to reach the Moon. The only rocket capable of dethroning the Saturn V could be the SLS rocket space launch system which will have a similar or perhaps somewhat superior performance than the Saturn V. The Effects of Weightlessness A time of 539 days out in weightlessness profoundly affects human physiology, especially worrying when arriving on a planet where no one can assist you. 
The ships that can be seen in the movies, with spacious and comfortable cylinder-shaped cabins rotating to simulate the acceleration of gravity, do not exist today. So astronauts who will go to Mars will suffer from weightlessness throughout the mission. It is not yet known precisely how they will recover when they reach Mars. For psychological reasons, two and a half years is a very long time. Earth will be seen by the crew as a star-like point of light for most of the voyage and barely noticeable on Martian night. The crew will have to live in a condition of permanent confinement in a small space in a situation of great stress and with the impossibility of maintaining fluid conversations with loved ones on Earth due to the signal's travel time. Remember that radio signals travel at the speed of light, which is the speed limit in the universe. Still, even at that speed, communications have a delay of 8 minutes between message and message due to the enormous distances the signals must travel. Conversing with a loved one in real time from Mars will be practically impossible. To these problems must be added all the technical, technological, and operational difficulties involved in taking a human crewed ship to such a remote place. No human being has ever experienced such a large journey. The astronauts will spend months in weightlessness, subjected to radiation from interplanetary space. Once on Mars, they will face other challenges that are very difficult to overcome, such as the fact that they will be locked 24 hours a day in a cabin probably equal or even smaller than the ship they used to get there. Although some enthusiastic and optimistic people about interplanetary travel say that humanity already has the technology and everything it takes to go to Mars, science tells us that we are not ready yet. The difficulties and challenges that arise from interplanetary travel are still considerable and difficult to overcome, but we may have the technology to achieve it. We only need the budget and time to plan things well. NASA has estimated that with modern science and technologies, it will be possible to take the first humans to Mars before the end of this century. Others think that in reality, there is much more to be done than that and the most optimistic think that it will be achieved in the coming years. What do you think? Do you think we will be able to get humans to the moon very soon or do we have many problems to solve? Let us know what you think in the comments of this video.